Hey, good morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. Rob here from Southwest Florida Television. I don't know what the beach is gonna look like. We had a really strong onshore breeze yesterday, which was not good. That's what brings the red tide closer to shore. It kills all the fish. Right now, I don't smell anything. I can breathe. That's a good thing. It feels like the wind's blowing offshore now, which is a really positive thing. It's beautiful out here, weather-wise. 67 degrees right now. Expecting a high of oh, up around 86 today. The sign up by the front entrance by the ranger station says the water temperature is 83 degrees. As the Gulf temp is 83 degrees. It's low tide right now. Tide is just turning, starting to come back in. Lots and lots of sea foam, it looks like, along the shore. I did not see any signs of Roy this morning. I did not see his car out in the parking lot. He was out here yesterday. He said the no see were terrible. He left. So I don't think we're going to see Roy this morning. chatting with him. Got our beautiful sea oats here, ready to bloom. They're so beautiful when they bloom, they get those big plumes on them. These are just getting ready to pop here. Let's walk out onto the beach. I know the rangers I spent a lot of time picking up the dead fish on the beach. It looks a lot cleaner out here. There's still dead fish out here. I don't want you to think they're all gone. Lots of them, but the rangers have picked up quite a few of them. Sadly, poor things, see them all down here. I'm sure some fresh ones washed up yesterday because of those onshore winds. I was just amazed at the amount of eels, eels that washed up on the, on the shore. Here's two eels right here. See these things look like little ropes. They're pretty dried out, but those are dead eels. I don't know what kind of eels those are. This darn red tide has taken its toll on just about every type of marine life out there. You can see the tide is really out right now. Very, very low. Lots. Lots and lots of shells here along the beach. Wow. There's a pile of shells. I don't know what all's out here, though. Let's take a little walk down here and see if... I can spot anything. There's so many. All that sea foam that Roy likes looking at. He enjoys looking at the little bubbles. The little bubbles in the sea foam.
gorgeous morning. Not many people out here, obviously. Still worried about the red tide. Otherwise, it's gorgeous here. 67 degrees. Walk down the beach a little ways and see what we find. We're at low tide right now. We're just the tide's just changing, just starting to come back in. This is where you you'll find some shark's teeth if you got some a good pair of eyes. See, there's all kinds of little black shells and rocks down here, and they kind of throw you off. A lot of them, you know, they, you see something like that, it kind of looks like a shark's tooth at first glance, but then when you pick it up, see, it's just a piece of a broken shell. You never know. I never find any shark's teeth. Other people find them all the time. For some reason, I can't spot them. I don't know why that is. Little black scallop shell. Little mossy arc. There's a little baby mossy arc shell right there. Still some fish, dead fish washing up on the beach. For those of you just joining for the first time, I'm up in North Naples, Florida, on the beach at Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. We're walking south right now. We're at what they what we're in area four right now. There's five different areas of the park, five different parking lots. We're in number four right now, heading south towards number three. Just taking my time, seeing what I can find here that's interesting. what's left of a little cockle shell. Lots of cockles here on the beach. Beautiful shells, the cockles. That's a little one. And over here, it's a little kitten's paw, little kitten paw shell. Supposed to be clear skies today, but we got some pretty high clouds. The sun's just kind of popping in and out here. Still a beautiful morning. You know, I haven't seen any sea stars on the beach. No, I'm sure the red tide affects them as well. There's another little tiny eel down there. Let's 
sad seeing all this dead marine life out here on the beach. Hopefully this red tide's gonna go away soon. It's been hanging around now for a month. It's really wreaked havoc on our beaches here. The wind is definitely blowing offshore this morning, so that is a positive thing. Hopefully it'll blow that red tide back out into the Gulf. I posted a link earlier this morning to some facts about red tide, if you're curious to learn more about red tide. You might want to check that out. Some very good facts about red tide. There's a lot of myths being published about red tide and people really need to read the facts before they start running their mouths, especially on social media. Everybody believes what they read now on the internet to be the truth. And a lot of times it's very far from the truth. Whenever you read something on the internet, do some fact checking, especially if you're going to quote, quote anything you read. There's a lot of false information out there these days. Boy, it's even though there's a lot of little shells here along the beach, I'm really not seeing anything out of the ordinary. Lots of neat fossils out here on the beach. Very interesting rocks here, and you never know when you gotta really pick them up and check them out. You never know what you're gonna find actually fossilized here on the beach. It's a lot more than just seashells here. There is sea glass. People ask if there's sea glass here. Yep, you can find sea glass. Isn't that neat? It's so cool looking. Beautiful little shells. You can always find some gorgeous shells. Never a shortage of pretty shells here at the beach. can find pieces of coral also. Little chunks. Sometimes you can find some nice big pieces of coral. Every once in a while you'll find a nice big piece of coral. There's a little piece of coral. Worm rock is another neat thing you find out here. Any worm rock? Let me see if I can find a piece of worm rock around here. No. Oh. Yeah, this might have, been, might have been a piece of worm rock right here. It's pretty worn. Yeah, this was, this is worm rock. That's really worn. It's hard to see the little worm tubes.
I did not see Roy's car here this morning. There's a good chance he came out for sunrise and the no see -ums chased him off the beach. That's what happened yesterday. I heard he was out here but left. So hopefully he's at home working on his book. That's going to be fun, huh? Sadly, there's still some fish washing up on the beach, some dead fish. It doesn't look like there's a lot of new dead fish on the beach. We still have the ones up here at the high tide line. These are Hell yeah, it looks like there's some fresh ones here, darn it. It's so sad. So sad seeing all these fish washed up on our shoreline. I wanna get back down to the water line here. I think with that big onshore wind we had yesterday that there'd be more shells along the beach. It's looking north. Turn around and start walking north here in a little bit. Head up the beach. Hmm. Little worm tip, tip of a worm shell over here. Pretty small one, a wormy tip. mullet a dead mullet I've gone about as far south as I'm as I'm gonna go this morning. Hmm. Some of these decaying fish are smelling pretty awful. turn around and walk up towards Wiggins Pass. Maybe we'll get up there, see if there's any fishermen. I don't know if you can see the barges, the dredging barges in the distance there. They're dredging out Wiggins Pass, slow but steady. Now 
what's that, an old conch shell or a whelk shell? That's a hard one. That looks like maybe an old fighting conch. What's left of a fighting conch shell? These are got the nickname Twisties. It's kind of neat though, looking down into all the little spirals of the shell. That's what's left of a Florida fighting conch. Beautiful shells, the little Florida fighting conchs. They're usually pretty abundant here along the beaches of Southwest Florida. Just whenever you pick up a shell, make sure there's nothing alive inside of it. A lot of little things make their homes in abandoned shells, hermit crabs. One day we found a Florida fighting conch shell with a little octopus inside it. Oh, here's a beautiful scallop. Let's see if it's a whole shell. See it down here? Let's see what it looks like. Yep. That's a gorgeous little scallop shell. Beautiful. Another beautiful. I've got quite a few of these scallops. They're gorgeous. That's kind of what you think of when you think of seashells. That scallop shape. Beautiful. Wish the sun would come out. Makes the colors a lot more vivid. You can see we've got some really high clouds right now. The forecast said clear skies. It doesn't look very clear to me. Hey, be sure to take some time and check out my videos and photos here on Facebook. Find some great pictures of the park here, some of its inhabitants, the birds, gopher tortoises, and marine life. Even a couple underwater shots of some of the little fish swimming along the shore. coming out here now for, I don't know, it's maybe coming up on three years now, coming out and walking the beach, chatting with our friend Roy. Roy is not here this morning. Nice little breeze almost hit me in the face there. Fortunately, it's coming from inland. The wind is blowing this direction offshore which is a very good thing blowing that red tide back out into the gulf where it belongs where actually it doesn't belong we don't want anything to do with that red tide we want it to just die bottom here see if there any signs of life anything crawling along Lots of sand dollars out here, usually, and sea stars out here just offshore. I don't know if the red tide affects them. I'm guessing it does. I'm guessing it kills all marine life. Very, very comfortable out here this morning. 
between the breeze and the temperature in the upper 60s. Weather-wise, it's beautiful. Got the sea foam coming up on the beach. Nice little, little black scallop shell there. It's just kind of washing by my feet as I was walking by. A little black scallop shell. Hopefully our park rangers are going to be able to get the beach cleaned up, get all the dead fish off it. Man, that's a heck of a job. There's a lot of fish here to pick up. Very sad. Definitely, <coughs> definitely can smell the red, <coughs> the red tide out here. Just got a whiff of it again. Woo. Disgusting. It's kind of like ammonia, you know, when you smell ammonia, how you cough. It's kind of how it. It is when you get a whiff of red tide. Very quiet out here this morning. The red tide has chased everybody away. Between our season winding down and the red tide, the beach is really empty this morning. I've seen two people here so far, two other people besides myself. I've not seen any dolphins here lately. I don't know where the dolphins go. Maybe they move inland during the red tide outbreaks. I sure hope the red tide doesn't affect our dolphins. I know it has actually killed some sea turtles. That's sad. Nesting season is officially starts in May, right around the corner. Sea turtle nesting season. That's when they here in in our beach we have loggerhead sea turtles that nest. 
they come up on the beach during the middle of the night and will dig a nest and lay their eggs. We'll be seeing some of those nests here soon. And then in a couple months, the eggs start hatching. Very rare to see the hat the hatching itself. That happens usually throughout sometime during the night. Every once in a while we might see a little stray lost on the beach, a little sea turtle hatchling lost on the beach. And we'll get in touch with the park ranger and have them help it out. They really don't want you picking up any sea turtles. And it's against the law, actually. You don't tamper with their nests. It's also against the law. We can hear the ospreys up there. Hear them? I was hoping to find a shark's tooth here this morning. There's not a lot of shells on the beach. I was just kind of walking along the water's edge, hoping to spot a shark's tooth. This is, but you just see all these little black things in the water and they really throw you off. There's people that come out here and find them all the time. And there's, yeah, you, know, you find all these little black pieces of shell. Broken shells. A lot of them look like they could be a shark's tooth. Not many, there's really no seashells out here along the beach this morning. At least in this section of the beach. see it it's pretty low tide now you can see the difference I'm walking up to the high tide line here it's where the water was up to yesterday all the way up to here you can see that big space here pretty low tide right now and sadly you can see all the dead fish still on the beach it's like some new ones washed ashore yesterday amazed at the amount of eels that have washed up the eels I've never seen eels as many eels washed up on the beach there's two eels right there there's an eel there an eel there so sad so so sad seeing all these dead fish holy smokes there's a huge eel over here, a huge one, a spotted moray. That's a big one there. You can see by the size of my hands, that's a big moray eel right there. Wow. That is so sad seeing those.
is that a, that's a leopard. I believe that's a leopard moray right there. And that is a big one. You definitely wouldn't want to meet that in the water. That's a couple feet. That's 24 inches. Wow. That was a big eel. They get bigger than that. That was a large one. It's horrible seeing all these dead fish. All kinds of fish. Sheep's head, sheep head, drum, trout, mackerel, puffer fish, bat fish, puffer fish everywhere. So sad. Hey, hey Roy, you made it out. Hey, good to see you, man. So sad. Well, somebody snuck up behind me. You know what I did this morning? I swung over by the other beach there just to see if it was any better, but uh, there are dead fish there too. Down up at Vanderbilt? Know? Yeah, yeah. How far did you go? Which well, Did I you just, go to where the big parking lot is? or? Well, I just I just uh, parked there at the end of Vanderbilt uh, Beach Road there. In the handicap parking? Yeah. Then Lucky I just, you. And <laughs> I walked a little bit, so... But it wasn't, uh, it was a little better in here, but about the same. I thought Well, they see, had... they have the machines that pick the fish yeah, up. Yeah, but there. I didn't see any big machine. They had a lot of dead fish that smelled yeah. there. Well, too. they came in yesterday. Oh, yeah. It was horrible yesterday. You could smell it in our house like yesterday. Well, down here it was really bad. Yeah. But it isn't too bad now. Well, the wind's blowing the other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, I want to tell you, I had a good thought about my book. Okay. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. And here's what I thought I'd do. All right. Because, uh, uh, you know, I talked to some publishers and all, and I, I don't think that's going to work out. They want huge quantities, and they want right. big upfront fees. I mean big. So I wasn't going to do that. So what I thought I'd do is maybe uh, uh, if people are watching on Facebook, if, the, if about 50 of them, say about 50, would send in 20 bucks a piece, then I'd uh, decide whether there was enough uh, uh, volume there to, to warrant the expense of... Uh, of uh, printing, because I got the expense of printing and mailing and all that sort of thing. So well, why don't you just let them do that online, like well, I said? Well, this is what I thought. And uh, and then uh, uh, if they'd be a little patient, because I don't have the book quite finished yet, and then i got to get it printed and all that takes a few weeks and all, and then I'll send them the book. If they don't, uh, if they don't think it's worth 20 bucks, why, uh, they can just give me a call and uh, keep the book, give it to a friend, and uh, I'll send them back their 20 bucks. How's that for a deal? Yeah, we'll have to figure out how to do that because you don't do anything on Facebook here. So. Well, I thought they'd just put it in the mail. I got my address, <laughs> 718 95th Avenue North, Naples, Florida, yeah. 34108. Well, that's Se a good thought. but <laughs> 7 718 95th Avenue North, <laughs> Naples, Florida, 34108. If they want 20, put 20 bucks in the mail to me, Roy T. Hase, H-A-A-S-E, I'll send them my book, and I think it'd be well worth 20 bucks. But if they don't think so, have them give me a jingle at 239-514-4066. I'll send them the money right back. Well, we'll see how many people show yeah. some interest in Yeah, if I get about 50 replies, that'll be enough then to, to warrant the expense of printing. See, I don't have it printed yet, and that'll cost some bucks. And I want to see if there's a market before I go and spend the money. I don't want to just sit home with a whole well, that's, bunch of... That's, that's why if you use those online companies, you don't have to worry about that. Well, I They, they charge you 300 bucks for the initial setup, and then that's it. I haven't been able to locate a company that will do well, that. Well, I sent you a link to one the other day. Yeah, well, I, I ran that down without any success. Really? Yeah. Explain the whole process there. Right, the right. And well, they, uh, I, left no word. I left word they had some sort of reply I put it in and that was really? the end of that yeah well there's dozens of companies like that right dozens. well that was the only one I found and I put in like you said on demand and there was a whole bunch of baloney so none of that seemed to work for me mm. so I think just if they'll just want to send me 20 bucks and I'll send them the book when I get it printed and uh, if they don't think it's worth it I'll send them money back so when do you think it's that. going to be printed well when I get 
50 requires, and I know it's so going to be... So all ready to be printed? Well, just about. I'm coming down the stretch. Wow. I've got, I got probably another couple of weeks of writing on it and thoughts, and then the printing takes a couple of weeks, so we've got about a month away, so if they'd be so patient... So we need, to, we need to share a little bit of it with people, whet their appetite. Well... Bring, it, bring I, a little piece of it to the beach, and... And we can read just a little bit out of there, so well, people get thought in, too. So people know what's but in I can, there. I can tell them. I got about say 15 different chapters. Nice. Of, of all different type of things, health, uh, diet. Well, there's been a lot of talk about diet, but I got some some interesting, uh, unique yeah. ideas, and um, uh, spirituality, and yeah. and. Uh, Oh, anger, how to get rid of anger and resentment. And I've got a few techniques well, for that, which I have to keep working on myself. <laughs> and, uh, oh, forgiveness, love, spirituality, just the whole gambit. And nice. I think there are going to be thoughts that are going to be worth 20 bucks. I mean, it's a lot of the stuff we've talked about over yeah, the years. It's everything we talked about oh, over the yeah. years. And more. Yeah, and, more. and I've got it all kind of written down with some thoughts uh, attributed to it and I think and, and if they don't think it's worth 20 bucks good I'll send them back the dough I've never chiseled anybody well, out of a go. nickel in my whole life so they can count on getting their money Perfect. back and oh and I thought I wrote a booklet out in California about 40 years ago and it's kind of an interesting little thing about uh, uh, about uh, uh, happiness and and all that sort of thing. Oh, that's another thing of, of my book is going to have heaven and hell, and and I know there is a heaven and hell uh, because it's hit right here, right now, <laughs> and I've been in both of them. And uh, <laughs> believe me, I prefer heaven. And uh, and we're given yeah, the free choice, and I've got various techniques so we can stay out of hell, or if we drop into it, how we can get back out in a hurry <laughs> and get up to heaven. <laughs> So, uh, well, that's very good. Yeah, and I, th I thought uh, that way. Uh, it and, sounds like and, and, there's probably going to be a sequel. <laughs> it sounds like there's probably going to be another book after this. Well, one. this one is entitled How I've Lived to Be Almost 100 and Enjoyed the Journey. <laughs> there you go. So, um, so if, if we want to start right today, if people want to send me 20 bucks, if I get 50 replies, then I'll go to the printer. If I don't get enough replies, I'll send them back their dough. Well, there you go. Count on that. And, and, and after they get the book, if they don't think it's worth 20 bucks, they can give me a jingle and I'll still send them back the dough and they can give, give the book to a friend or something. Well, oh, and go. I got a whole, whole uh, a chapter. Well, we've discussed it here about drinking uh, poison, too. Yep. <laughs> so I, I went into that at some great detail. <laughs> I'm sure you did. So maybe I can get some people on the wagon and that'd be a worthwhile uh, achievement, too. Well, you never know. So, all told, this is right this very moment is the promotion that I'm going to do, and I appreciate, Rob, you're giving me this opportunity well, to talk to, to 20,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> and out of the 20,000, if 50 want to 50 send me 20 bucks. Get at, it started. Get at, the printing. At, at 718 95th Avenue well, we'll North, Naples, Florida, 34108, Roy T. Hazy. And my phone is area code 239 514 4066. And give me a jingle anytime, and uh, before you get the book, after you get the book, whatever, and tell me well, what you, you think of it. And maybe other people got some good thoughts yep. I could incorporate into a sequel. So that so it's like the fifth, the first fifty are going to be your seed money to get the printing started. Yeah, yeah, yep. and, and it'll let me know that it's worth getting it's, it printed. Otherwise, yep. I go to the printer, I spend a. Uh, 500 bucks or some darn thing and I, I have big boxes of books at home and kindling. Yeah, what do I do then? You see what I mean? <laughs> but if I know 50 people are interested... Well, I think 50 people are going to order the book. I don't see a problem with that. Well, I, I hope so. And uh, when Maybe I we'll get try to set up... I'll set, get you set up with a Facebook page for the book. Well, and that, well, way we can, that way we can keep track well, of who I'd wants one. I appreciate that, Rob. And all that. And in the next book I write, I'll dedicate it to you for all of your, uh. <laughs> all of your assistance. In fact, I, maybe I'll dedicate this one to you. That's right. It didn't, oh, that's it didn't right. finish yet. That's all right. To Rob and all my friends. That are, It'll be good. That are we gotta have, we got to put some pictures in there. Well, I'd be happy to you do know, that. We need to put some pictures of you out here on the beach. i got some good pictures of you somewhere. Well, let's throw one them One or two. <laughs> we got to have a picture of you on the cover, that's for sure. Well, I hope so. <laughs> one of the, we don't want to get people turned off. <laughs> I've got some, I think I've got some great photos of you at sunrise. 
Yeah, yep. that'd be wonderful. That'd be a nice cover for the book. Well, life is so glorious, and we can share it with other people this well, way. And share your life with others. And yeah. Hopefully, they'll learn something from it, and they'll make their lives better. Well, I don't know Wouldn't if they'll nice? learn, but it's it's way ahead. Have them send me 20 bucks and they can see if it, I wouldn't charge anything for it. I sent it out for nothing, but I got expenses, you know, mailing and printing and the whole schmear. So if I can just cover that, I'm a happy man. There you go. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be a big success. It's going to be a Barnes and Noble top seller here before you know it. <laughs> well, I at least locally. I sure appreciate your assistance because I don't know how to merchandise these things. And well, once we get it, once you finally get it printed and we have something tangible to show people. Well, I can get it printed. I've, I'll bet I've you, I'll bet printers. you we'll get, I'll bet you one of the local news stations will pick up on it. Well, the more the merrier. Yep, and that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll keep working and get it finalized and I'm coming down the home stretch and you see it's all in longhand. I just sit at home and you know, right. scribble it out. Now I got a typist lady, fortunately, who said she'll type it up from my longhand because a printer told me they got to get a typewritten copy. They aren't going right. to print it off of my Well, scribble. hopefully she's using a computer, not a typewriter. They don't want it on a typewriter. Well, I don't just so, yeah. so I got to, first I got to get it typed, then I got to send it to the printer and ta-da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. So, that, that 20 bucks, that'll, you know, if I get 50 of them, that'll cover my costs and I'll know we, it's worth getting well, started. there you go. All right. So, okay, if they that'll be $75 for the airtime here. Oh, well, it's worth it. <laughs> just, there, the book just went up a buck. <laughs> How about a discount? $74.95. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's take your walk and I'll check in with you hey, on the Rob, way back. I really all right? appreciate, yeah. appreciate all yeah. your help on this. We, Take a take your walk, and I'll beat up with you here yeah, in a little you've while. Yeah, probably a lot of got other a lot of good ideas how to merchandise oh, yeah. this book. Absolutely. Too. Yeah, I really appreciate that help. We're merchandising the book I'll right now. I'll dedicate the book to you. Right now, we're merchandising. Yeah, it, we are. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to work. It's a beautiful Sunday, and by George, the sun's coming well, out. Think about when you're walking. Think about one of the little stories that's in the book, and let's talk about it when we get back together here. Okay. All right. That'll we'll give great. everybody a taste of what's in the book. Okay. Wet their appetite. Yeah. That'll All be right. Ah, uh, you got your shoes on. You aren't kidding. Good for you. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> no trying stepping to get on these on, dead fish. Get over that uh, poison there. Does it hurt? Does no, it hurt? no, it's, it's it's healing up pretty good. The doctor did a good job. Good. Or he sure shot me full of antibiotics. Yeah. But just one one dose. Just one shot to give no, you any two pills. Two shots. Two, two shots, shots and pills. Pills. Yeah. Oh well. Something you don't like doing, but... Well, it's worth it, boy. It's better off than losing a foot. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> I don't want chapter 16 yeah. with a one-footed road. Well, then I, then I really need my crutches. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll check back. I'll check back in with you as soon as you take your walk. Think about something interesting that's in the book that we can talk about. Okay. All right? Thanks, All right, Great Roy. You. I'm glad to see yeah. you. I didn't think you were going to be out today. Well, I went to the other beach. I thought it wouldn't be so stinky, and I, yeah. I kind of missed this beach. And I actually, I thought, hey, if I get over there, maybe my friend Rob will be there, and I can tell him about the book. So it's I was me, excited about, about meeting you. and Just me and my, the dead fish this morning. Nobody out here. Well, the fish aren't too bad. It <laughs> the wind is. It, it is what it is. Yeah. No, the wind. Thankfully, the wind's blowing the yeah, other way. It doesn't, it doesn't smell that bad. Well, go get on your walk here. Maybe you and I are getting so <laughs> fishy. We don't smell it ourselves. Yeah, we're becoming. Good. Maybe we smell like fish too. <laughs> <laughs> we probably smell as bad as the fish out here. Well, we got to be part of nature, isn't that how it works? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's your beautiful environment you've been telling me that's about. That's it, right there, Roy. Yeah. Look at it, isn't that gorgeous? That's gorgeous. That. That's gorgeous, Roy. <laughs> we, we didn't kill them. Oh, no. <laughs> Mother Nature killed those poor yeah. things. But you like fish. I'm surprised you're not collecting them. Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you something. You smoke you know, them, they're not I bad. Really like, I really like my swordfish. And last night, Ooh. I was going to have swordfish. And I, you know, all these dead fish on the beach Turn turned me stomach. off. I couldn't, I couldn't eat fish. Really? No, yeah, no, seriously. I thought, oh, who would see? After seeing all these dead fish, <laughs> I couldn't eat it. That's hard to believe. Uh, I know you between your salmon and your swordfish, and yeah, the old salmon days from Alaska. <laughs> mm. 
I love smoked fish. Oh, that's... Hey, yeah, smoked salmon. Somebody at the farmer's market had that. Oh, oh did you wind good. up going there the other day? No, I, I didn't go back. Uh, uh, he hasn't been there for quite a while. Uh, I did bad. get smoked fish, uh, smoked salmon. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Well, get on your walk and get back. Okay, so, man. Or I got to run out of batteries. Oh, okay, we don't want that. <laughs> I don't want us running out of batteries either. <laughs> All right, I'll yeah. see you. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Look forward to it. All right, and watch well, the hang, I got watch the fish. Up at 20 minutes back, or should I cut it short? Let's cut it short. Let's let's meet uh, on the way back here. Okay. Instead of going past here, I'll just catch you back here. Maybe I'll catch you up there. So uh, about uh, ten, if I I'll about 10 minutes. You you want to see? 15 me. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll be back in 15. Give minutes. you. Give you time to think about something interesting okay. in the book. Sounds good. We'll share it. We'll okay. share one of the stories from Roy's Wonderful. new book. <laughs> okay, very good. And what was the title again? Ooh. How how I've lived to be almost a hundred and enjoyed the journey. Enjoyed the journey. <laughs> that's that's your that's your mantra. Enjoy yeah. the journey. That's for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in a few. Good show, Rob. <laughs> oh boy. Well, we're going to hear a story from the book, so stay tuned. We'll just walk up the beach a little further, see what we find, see if we find any interesting seashells. I see something washed up on the beach down here behind me. Oh, here's a feather. Found lots of nice feathers on the beach. Might be a sandpiper. Beautiful little feather. But we're still feeling the effects of the red tide, unfortunately, here. We have lots of dead fish still washing up on the beach. However, right now, this morning, the wind's blowing offshore, so it's keeping the red tide offshore. There's a horseshoe crab that just washed up, sadly. Dead horseshoe crab. And you know what? Whew, beautiful. This is not a dead horseshoe crab. Thankfully, this is not a dead horseshoe crab. They shed their shells, they, everything. Their feet, them, they actually shed these shells. And that is just an old shell. That is not a dead horseshoe crab. So that's a natural occurrence there. Pretty crazy looking animals, these horseshoe crabs. That's the front of it. There's one of its eyes right there. It's other eye there. And that tail. Now that tail, that's not a weapon. It'd be pretty hard for a horseshoe crab to fight with that tail. Its little tip is broken off. It's pretty sharp. But what they use that tail for, the primary reason for that tail is they wind up flipped over on their back like that. They use this tail to turn himself over. But you definitely wouldn't want to step on that out in the water. Some pretty sharp barbs along here. These are broken off. That's a horseshoe crab, a very common sight here on our beaches. Well, he's making his way up the beach there. We'll catch up with him in a little bit hear one of the stories from his book. It's going to be interesting. He's a very trustworthy man. So he's going to, he's trying to get his thousand dollars to get raised to get his book printed, published. So I'm going to see if I can set him up a Facebook page to do that. I don't know how we're going to do that. I don't want to be responsible for collecting the money for it. Well, maybe there's maybe there's somebody out here that wants to work with me on that. Because it'd be nice if people could use a credit card to order his book. We're just 
Just walking here slowly up the beach now. I'm up in North Naples, Florida. You can see still lots of dead fish rotting away on the beach, sadly. Not only fish, a lot of eels, a lot of eels. There's an eel right here. That's an eel. It's been killed by the red tide. And there's another little eel right there. I mean, these, gosh, these eels, there's m way more out here today than there were on, on Friday. There's more of them over here. This red tide has been relentless, relentless for a month now. I just wish it would go away. All kinds of fish out here. Not a pleasant sight. And on top of that, we've had some pretty good beach erosion. You can see this big ledge here. Some strong, strong tides. All of my beach walks aren't this gloomy. <laughs> if you're new, we've had some beautiful beach walks, seen some really beautiful sights out here. Just gotta take the good with the bad, whatever mother nature serves up. It's just part of the big circle here. Red tide's been happening for a long time. It's not an a new occurrence by any means. Right before this live feed, I posted a link to where you can learn more about red tide. That's sad. There's two mullet right there. A little baby mullet. If you click on that link, you can learn more about red tide, its cause, some of the facts about red tide. There's a lot of misinformation about red tide floating around on the internet right now. And a lot of people are quoting them, the wrong facts. So get your facts straight and then share them. You should do that with anything you read on the internet. There's so much BS on the internet now and people just take it to be true and they share it. <coughs> and it, whoa. <coughs> Red tide. <coughs> In the air here. Woo. Wow. That was a strong, strong whiff of red tide. Wow. What's interesting is they say it's safe to eat fish that you catch during a red tide. You just gotta make sure you clean them well, get all the innards out, because that's where the red tide is in, in their guts. So you will see people fishing out here. But on these beach walks, you know, on occasion, boy, we've seen some, on occasion, some really, really beautiful dolphins up close. Roy and I have had some great dolphin encounters out here. So you gotta take some time, go through all my videos, my photos. You'll find some really, really interesting things. There's Roy again. I'm just gonna walk up a little further up the beach. I'm just gonna go up there around the corner and take a peek and I'm gonna go up here, take a peek, and I'll catch up with you. All oh, right. Okay. You want me to go up around the corner? I thought your batteries were running out. Oh no, we got enough to. I got enough to make it up here. I'm. 
I mean, I'll, I'm going to walk up ahead of you, and I'll catch. You. I'll turn around and come back and catch you. If okay. you keep if you keep walking up there, just keep walking up. I'm good. Unless it's too unless the red tide's bad oh, up there I love and we it. can't no, breathe. I, I love it. I'm I just I just got a whiff of it here. I just didn't want to miss you. you oh no, you're not gonna miss me. Oh no no. That'd be that's my batteries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Roy is really excited about that book he's He's writing. It's getting close to getting it finished. But he's going to share one of the little stories from it with me here in a minute when I catch up with him again. I just wanted to. Whoa, dolphin right out here. Roy, Roy, dolphin just jumped right offshore here. I haven't seen a dolphin in a long time. There he is. See him right out there? I'm glad that they're still out here. I was worried about them. Where'd he go? Where did he go? It's hard to see him with these waves. He came right in up by shore. I, I heard the splash. So they're out here, thank goodness for that. I don't know where he went. Oh, he's right over here. He's right out here. That water's deep out here this morning. I think he's right out here in front of us somewhere. He, right here, see him, see him? Yeah, he's, he's right out here in front. Look out here. There he was, yeah. Two of them right there in front of us. Yep. Yeah. There's a school of fish right out here the dolphins are chasing. It's hard to see them with the waves. Where did they go? Where did they go? Yeah, it looks like they're making their way to the north. Well, there was two of them. They came right in one time. <coughs> Definitely. <coughs> well, we know the dolphins are still here. Thank goodness. Well, they must be heading back out into deeper water. A lucky day. It's always going to be a good day when you spot dolphins. According to the uh, affluence that they dredge, uh, they got a big hose. I haven't seen any hose. No, they just move it off to the to the outside, well, out into deeper how do they water. Move it? That's the question. They must have a hose going on. Yeah, there. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I, I don't see, see it, but... I hear a motor running, but I don't see where they're... Yeah, I don't know where they they dump the sand, but... Yeah, all right, I'm, maybe we'll see the dolphins again this morning. That was awesome. I don't know if y'all got to see them at all in the video. It was pretty, pretty fleeting, a fleeting moment. But I was just talking about dolphin sightings. And lo and behold, two showed up. That's very, very cool. I just want to go up to the pass and see if there's anybody fishing. if the cockle shell I put up there the other day is still there. For some reason, people walk by our shell trees and think that the shells hanging there are for them to take off the tree. <laughs> I don't know what the reason why they would think that. I think somebody would hang a shell there for them to take. 
me see if that cockle is still up there. Remember, the reason a lot of people hang these shells is they hang them in memory of a loved one that's passed away. That's the reason you see a lot of these shells. Ooh, there's that, yep, the cockle that I hung is still there, see it? Nice big cockle shell up there. I took a picture of that and shared it yesterday. It's a great looking shell. Let's hope it stays there. There's the dredge, one of the dredges. They're dredging the channel here at Wiggins Pass. Wiggins Pass has really changed over the years. Very hard to navigate. But that's one of the dredging barges right there. Roy just asked what they do with the sand that they dredge up. I have no idea where the sand goes. They definitely don't dump it up on the beach. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more if I quit walking. Give you a little closer look at the barge. The barge and pilot boat. For those of you just joining, we're up in North Naples, Florida, at Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. I'm up at the north end of the park right now in what is known as Area 5. We've been experiencing the repercussions of red tide here for pretty much a month now in southwest Florida, up and down our coastline. It just hits at different areas at different times along our shoreline. So there's lots of dead fish on the beach, sadly. Our park rangers have been working hard to clean them up. It's just a never-ending task. It's, they can't keep up with it. Just when we think the red tide is gone, it comes back. Well, there's a beautiful cockle shell over here. A whole cockle shell. See if I can get that before the waves carry it out. Wow, beauty. Ooh, two beautiful little shells. Look at this. Three beautiful shells. Let's see where we're gonna start. I'm gonna put, put them down in the sand there. We're gonna start with this one. This is a little fighting conch shell. A little baby Florida fighting conch. Right next to it was a bigger one, more of an adult size shell. There you can see the two fighting conch shells, Florida fighting conchs, beautiful shells. I'm gonna keep the little one. That's a nice specimen. That's a really nice specimen right here. I'm gonna keep that one. Then over here, it's a little crown conch, piece of a crown conch. Now what's neat about this, watch when I flip it over, this crown con. Look at that, it's almost like it was cut in half. Isn't that neat? Definitely gonna keep that. Crown con, that is cool. And then over here, was that cockle shell. That's what they look like when they're alive out in the water. It's a whole cockle shell right there. See how it looks like a heart? 
Hey, the other day, Rob, I saw a shell, a shell running right down towards the ocean. You saw a shell running the towards shell the... was running like mad. I couldn't believe it. Little le the shell had little legs sticking out and yep. running like mad. It must have been a hermit crab. Yeah, you're right. That was cute. Yeah, there yeah. was a hermit crab inside, and the crab was running like mad. <laughs> I funny. thought it was a shell. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, yeah, he looked, I, I turned it over and he looked at me and it disappeared. <laughs> he scared him. Boy, there you go, natural hurry. castanet. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Bite your nose. <laughs> yeah, those hermit crabs, they're really goofy how they, they got to stick out their legs and they run Aren't like they something? here in the shell. <laughs> well, let's get down, I'm going to get down a little further and then we'll, we'll have our little chat. We're going to chat a little bit more about Roy's book. Never had a book dedicated to me. Well, here's your opportunity. That'll give you more stimulus to, to merchandise it, doesn't it? Top of a moon right shell. In front of the title page, dedicated to Rob Stan. <laughs> Beautiful little shark eye here. Beautiful. Hey, what a day. Yes, sir. It is gorgeous, Roy. What else do we have out here? Ooh, this is dangerous here. Broken bottle. Ugh, that is dangerous. Piece of broken glass. I'm gonna put this up in the woods here where nobody's gonna step on it. I don't have pockets big enough to put that in. Oh, you can see all the dead fish out here on the beach. See all those little bumps? That's all dead fish from the red tide. I'm going to get back out here, closer to the water. See if there's any more neat shells along here. Tide's slowly starting to come in here. A scallop. It's an old scallop, kind of faded. Florida fighting conch shell, another Florida fighting conch shell. Beautiful shells. Definitely probably the most collected seashell on our beaches, the Florida fighting conch. Just always make sure they're empty. Make sure there's no living animal inside. All kinds of critters make these shells their home, not just the fighting conchs. Oh, there's a beautiful, look at this one. This one's kind of faded out, but look at the stripes on that one, wow. Interesting colors. Beautiful stripes. Wow. So sad seeing these fish washed up dead on the beach. All killed by the red tide. Yeah, no fishermen out here today. Here's a interesting piece of worm rock. A little chunk of worm rock. Sad, another dead eel on the beach. This 
red tide has been relentless, this recent outbreak. Now Roy is coming up here to say his prayers. That's nice. Glad he got a chance to do that this morning. Oh my God, what the, what kind of fish is that? Fish that is. That is a wild looking fish right there. Bear with me for a minute. I'm going to take a photo of that. seeing it there like that. Woo! Breezy up here. All right, I'll be I'll be down there in a minute. Get out of this breeze. We'll get down behind the trees out of the wind. Okay. All right? Did you think of something to Did I'll you think of a did you, here. did you think of a story from the book to share? Yeah, I got some little thoughts. All right, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> we'll get. I'll, I'll meet you just around the corner there. Poor dead angelfish here. Little leopard eel, leopard moray, little baby. I apologize if you don't like seeing these images, but we got to take the good with the bad. Boy, it is really breezy here. Really breezy up at the pass. Man. This is Wiggins Pass. It's supposed to be clear skies. Not very clear skies this morning. A lightning whelk. Huh. Well, I'm glad I walked up here. A little lightning whelk. Nice. Beautiful shell. I'm glad I made the walk up to the end. That's a keeper. This little whelk. Get the sand out of it here. A lightning whelk. There's quite a few whelks here, different types of whelks. It's a lightning whelk. That's a small lightning whelk. Nice little finds. Another feather. You can find some pretty feathers on the beach here. It's pretty nice looking there. See how windy it is. It's really blowing. There's another whelk shell and another whelk shell, an older whelk. That's pretty worn. An old lightning whelk. Florida fighting conch shell. Beautiful, beautiful shells, the fighting conchs. Just gonna go up just a little further here. Another 50 feet maybe. What do we got down here? Oh. 
top of a fighting conch, just the very tip of a Florida fighting conch. Maybe, maybe a nice scallop shell here, let's see. Another nice scallop shell, another beautiful scallop. Beautiful colors right there on that scallop. Well, let's move back down towards Roy. Head back down towards Roy. And maybe we'll hear one of the stories from his, the new book he's writing. That is so exciting. We had a nice chat about that book. You definitely need to check out the beginning of our my beach walk here. What on earth is that fish right there? It's a crazy looking fish. I'm gonna take a picture, bear with me. So that's two fish I have seen on the beach that I don't know what they are. I'm gonna post those two pictures. Somebody can tell me what they are later. The other fish is up here. Let's see if I can get a little better picture of it. The sun's popped out here for a minute. Walking south now down the beach. Darn it, the sun's going in behind a cloud. I don't know what that is. Sorry about that. Out that fish there, trying to figure out what kind of fish that was. If anybody knows, go ahead and comment on it if you know what that is. It's amazing to think of all the variety of fish and other types of marine life that are just offshore of our beach here. It's amazing. Sad to see them all washed up dead on the beach though. Very sad. walking south now up in North Naples Florida if you're just tuning in we've been feeling the effects of red tide for over a month now that's why we have these dead fish on the beach I posted a link to some facts about red tide earlier this morning you want to check that out Learn about red tide. Learn the truth about red tide, not the myths. Up, oh. Roy's up here on the bench, sitting on one of the picnic tables. I almost walked by you. 
I nice, almost nice, passed you by. It's a nice spot here. Yeah, it's a great spot. Very Gosh. Pleasant. So, we were talking about your book, how you're trying to get some, get some orders, get some seed money to get it printed. So you said 50 orders is what you're looking to get here, 20 bucks a copy, and then we'll have some money to get it printed. Yeah, and if it could send that to 718 95th Avenue North, Naples, Florida, 34108. Well, there you go. Well, 718 95th Avenue North, Naples, Florida, 34108, and, and uh, I'll send them the book, and uh, well, if they send me 20 bucks, and then I'll send them the book if they don't care for the book. Well, like I say, I'll, uh, they can give me a jingle at 239-514-4066. I'll send them their 20 bucks right back, and they can give the book to some friends Just or neighbors. Just keep the book and give it to somebody else. Sure, what the heck. Yeah, how can, they're going to love the book. So there's a guarantee. There's a guarantee. <laughs> a money-back guarantee, it's like right I was talking right, about at the stores. <laughs> yep, and it's right out of the horse's mouth, so to say, right here. You cannot renege on that. We've got it right here on the video. <laughs> So, so after yeah. they send the money, it'd be a little delay. I've got a, probably another week or two to finish the book, and and then I got a probably a week or two to get it printed. So we're talking about a month's time. So they'd have to be a little patient. Right, but that'll be good. At least we'll get you'll get some hard copies of it, and then we'll oh, have yeah. something to show people and share. And yeah, that'll be a delight. And I think it'll be. I really and think it'll be worthwhile. Those first fifty. They are signed, going to be signed by the author. Oh, sure. Right? Uh, yeah, that's yep. for sure. Definitely. Those and will like be signed I say editions. That I, I did write a book about 40 years ago about happiness, and, uh, and it, I think it's kind of a, a cute little thing. Got a lot of, lot of um, illustrations. I had quite a good artist working on it, so a lot of good illustrations. And Very I'll nice. include that in the first, oh, I think I probably maybe have about 20 left or so. I'd have to check in the drawer. And, so I'll include the first 20. I'll the first free, 20 free, free copy get a of copy that of too. happiness yeah <laughs> wow it was written about 40 years ago when i was out in california all right well that'll be great so, so the first 50 are going to be signed probably 50 more years ago who knows and the first well, 20 orders they're going to get a copy of happiness well yeah yeah they got about so they're going to get yeah. two doses of happiness here <laughs> <laughs> can't beat that gotta love it <laughs> well what's See, what, see if you can share one of the one of the, the, the stories or tips from your book here. Well, let's, let's... one of the big, big things. Now, they always, there's an old cliche that we're composed of body, mind, and spirit. Right. Which I think is great, and I agree with that. Uh, however, one of the most important uh, facets of our being has been overlooked in that cliche, and that is emotions. We're body, mind, and spirit, and emotions. Emotions are one of the biggest uh, things that control and, and direct and guide our life. Yep. And emotions e include a vast, vast periphery of, of things. There's, of course, there's joy and happiness and, and uh, ecstasy and exhilaration. Yeah, those are all great positive emotions. And that's, of course, what we want to keep working on is positive emotions. It ties in with positive thinking. Right. It ties in with prayer, all forms of, uh, of, of emotions. And then, of course, there's negative emotions, and mm -hmm. those are the really bad ones. Uh -huh. Anger, resentment, and, and, uh, and, and so what my book has got some little tips how to control this anger thing, because that's a big, big, dangerous thing. When you get angry, you're completely out of control. Right. And we have to stay in. When you're out of control, you could do some very damaging things. You could damage yourself. You're, of course, damaged property. You could damage other people, hurt other people, all because you're in this fury and you're out of control. Yep. So I've got some little tips about how to uh, control this, hopefully. Well, this anger thing, which we're all subject to. Oh, me, absolutely. me too. I mean, the slightest little thing can cause a resentment that can build into a huge big ang anger. Now look at look at wars. My gosh, uh, oh, yeah. I, I, it, it's just no, no end to this uh, anger and resentment. So anyway, emotions are tremendous. They tie into, uh, like I say, prayer and your relationship with the, with the great creator is a, is a big emotional thing. Yep. So I, I think emotions have been kind of glossed over and overlooked uh, when people are, are thinking about about their of course their their self and their environment and how they should behave and so the control of emotions another emotion is humility uh, hmm. just about everything that we 
do and feel are controlled by emotions. It's about the biggest thing there is. So, Good point. So I've got a, a, a kind of a expose on emotions and all so that. So that's, oh, is that a whole chapter? Well, yes, a, a chapter, right. there's a whole chapter on emotions and it ties in with other chapters. Like I say, there's a chapter about, about prayer and there's a chapter about anger. And so there's different chapters, but the emotion thing kind of ties into all these chapters. That's why I wanted to kind of bring up emotions. Yeah, that's a good one. So there's a lot of little thoughts in the book that I've been thinking about over the many, many years and, and, the, and the, the joys and, and problems that I've had during my life and how they could be possibly uh, avoid the problems and, <laughs> and spend more time with the joys. <laughs> So that's uh, that's the story of life, and like I say, you've kind of stimulated me to think about these things. Every day you say, "What's the word of the day?" and I, I have to kind of ruminate a bit and and um, and come up with something hopefully worthwhile. And so um, now I want to gather them together in this book, and that's why I want to dedicate it to you because you're the one who <laughs> stimulated me to 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 gather up my oh, thoughts nice. and experiences and and make them available to other people. Well. I'm going to I'm going to post I'm going to share your address and phone number here on Facebook. I'm going to put your picture there with your contact information. And we'll see what happens. Wonderful. I've already okay. there's people already here saying they want a copy, they want your address. Where oh really? Oh yeah. Already getting people interested. My here. gosh. Well, yep. do they have my address like well, I say seven? We're going to give it. We're going to I'm going to post that and they can get it. I'm not well. going to message everybody here individually i'm going to put a post well, i was up. just going to tell them what the address well, you can I... tell them one more time give them a chance okay. to get their pen and paper here give it's... them a minute get your get your pencil and paper ready and we're going to give you roy's address and phone number yeah they can go just put a check or a 20 buck bill in an envelope it's no big deal like <laughs> i say like i say uh, i mean they should put the return address on the envelope absolutely and you and i'll uh, i'll either send them the book or the money back if i you know, and then they can give me a jingle if they're impatient after a couple of months and they don't have the book yet. Why, they can give me a jingle and say, hey, so send first, me back my 20 and the, bucks. And the first 20 people that order, this is an advanced order. The book hasn't, it's not even finished yet. Roy's got another not couple of weeks. Not quite finished. Now i got to get it printed. And he's got to get it printed. So weeks. this is, he's, he's looking for 50 orders for seed money to get the book printed. At least the first copies, the first edition. Well, then I'll know at least that there's yep, a market there's for it and it's worth it to get printed. The first 50 copies are definitely going to be autographed by Roy <laughs> with a little personal message from Roy. <laughs> the first 20 orders are going to get a copy of his book, his other book, Happiness, that he wrote, yeah. which I didn't know. I, that's the first time I ever heard about that. Well, it's kind of cute. I, I think it's worthwhile. So there you go. So the first 20 are going to get a double whammy. So let's go ahead and give every, first, give him your how to spell your name. Well, it's Roy R O Y. <laughs> we got that. And it's Hazy H A A S E. I always have to say two A's and one S. But if they, <laughs> if they put H A S S E, it, it'll still get to me. But it's in reality H A A S E. Hey, it's a German word for for rabbit. Oh, is it? That's why I'm always jumping Hase, along Hase. on the beach. <laughs> Hazy is a That's rabbit. That's why you're a rabbit bouncing German. around out here. <laughs> All right. Now, what's your address? It's 718-718-7185th 718 718 Avenue North. 95th Avenue North in Naples, Florida, 34108. There you go. 718-95th Avenue North, Naples, Florida, 34108. Well, I hope they have a big truck. The mailman has a big truck. Well, I, I look <laughs> forward to that because I, I, I think this is a, a real honor and privilege for me to be able to uh, expose some of these thoughts, and it comes. There you go, it, Emily. Emily. Come, Emily's like just said she wants to be one of the first twenty. And, and the thoughts uh, are inspired by a great creator. They're not my thoughts; they come from God, really. All, all your thoughts come from God, so you got to have good positive go. thoughts because there's also a lurking devil, and the negative thoughts come from the devil. So. And we're given this free choice, which is a tremendous I mean, it, responsibility. You, know, you say it comes from God, but it's how you interpret what comes from God. Well, Everybody interprets everything things differently. Everything has to be interpreted you know, differently. These are, this is your opinion. You know, yeah. these are, this is your opinion. I told you about the Catholic priest, didn't I? And, and I, I thought I was very impressed with him. 
I used to go to the Catholic Church with Audrey, and the priests are really good guys. I got to know them quite well. They're uh -huh. just wonderful gentlemen. And the one I got especially friendly with and knew him, and so I thought I'd really kind of catch him up a little bit. And I said, uh, Father, I said, there's only one God, isn't there? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I said, if there's only one God, how come there's so many different religions? I really thought I had Right, it, yeah. I didn't have them. He said, they're all the same. It's just a matter of interpretation. Of course. Now, that's a, that's a good thought, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. That's a good thought. So Is there to, one right religion? Probably not. All the same? No. All the same. Just a matter of... To have a Catholic priest say they're yep. all the same, I thought was very impressive. <laughs> yeah. No. No, but yeah, a lot of people wonder that. You know, why yeah. are there so many different religions? Oh, it's just and, a matter of interest. So they're all, they're all interpreting God's right. word, and they're and, and we're doing the same thing, really. We're we're interpreting it. Oh, of course. So we're involved with this whole religion thing, and even the, you know creations of religions. Yeah. So it all ties in. So we're given a tremendous responsibility and a, quite an honor and privilege, but it's also responsibility to do a good and proper job of this interpretation and to work at it. It isn't just something you think about for an right. hour, hour on Sunday morning. It's something and that, it's more you, that you work at every moment right. of the day, night you don't, and night and day. Uh, you don't think about it, you live by it. Yeah, every moment of the night yeah. and day. You got some good thoughts, too. You should write a book, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, could, you could dedicate it to you're me. You're my mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really do have good thoughts, because uh -huh. when we're chatting on the beach, you always kind of interject some, I've, some thoughts. I've dedicated my Facebook page to you, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> You've become the star here of well, Southwest Florida Television. you stimulated me to, to think about these things. Otherwise, oh, they're kind of lost in the shuffle, you know? You're so busy with your with your daily work and yeah. your, your chores and... and well, your... I hope I added another 100 years onto your life by doing that. Well, I look forward to that. I know you added quite a few years to my life, your conversation. <laughs> really? you, heck yeah, well, you've inspired great. me. <laughs> if you can do it, I can do it. Well... Somebody's got to take over the position it's, of mayor out here. <laughs> it's good to be inspired. I think you got to be stimulated so you yep. you get full of energy and zest, and you you feel you're doing something really vital and worthwhile instead of just kind of slumping along. You know right. what I mean? So you got to really go for it. But it's this is such a great place to come out and oh, do yeah. some thinking, oh, isn't yeah. it? Oh yeah, you got to have peaceful times too. Yeah. You aren't always rushing and striving and yeah. be, being at peace is all a big part of it too yeah. and i mean it, you can be by yourself here but there's oh yeah lots of nice people if you want to have some conversation oh, the dolphins are leaving oh, the dolphins. and the birds are flying and oh paradise paradise it's starting to look a little bit nicer out here now the yeah, sun's is. starting to hit the water yeah getting some colors out there it's fun seeing those two dolphins isn't that nice seeing the Boy. dolphins this morning yeah i hadn't seen them in a while I was worried that the red tide chased them away. Yeah, it didn't seem to bother them any. Of course, they're air breathers. Maybe that's the difference. I think that has, that's a lot to do with it because yeah. that's what kills the fish. The red tide gets in their gills. Yeah. And the dolphins are mammals. But, however, it did kill manatees. There, there were manatees washed up on the beach. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, and, the, the, and sea turtles, too, and they're air breathers as well. See, I also touch on... Uh, what on, else? On vit you know, everybody says take your vitamins. Well, I go along well, with that. Health is a big topic. Yeah, of course. It's a big other well, books and books on vitamins. That's a but book in itself for you. But there's one one little thing that I, I have never read in a book. Well, I, I read the research about it, but uh, it hasn't been espoused in a book that I know of. And that's about vitamin C. You were All just right. talking about mammals, and that reminded mm -hmm. me. All the mammals, which is the um, uh, category that we fall into, all of the mammals, except man, uh, produce in their body vitamin C. For some reason or other, we're the only mammal that doesn't. Hmm. So um, I think vitamin C is vital to our health. There's no question oh, about it. And so what I did is, is uh, get some figures about the amount of vitamin C that the animals produce, like an elephant certainly uh, produces more vitamin C than a mouse. Uh, they're all mammals, I think. <laughs> I would so, think so. I, so what I did is calculate, according to my tonnage, my, my weight, right. the, the amount of vitamin C I sh should be producing if I was another right. type of mammal. Okay, it came out to be 
18,000 units a day. Wow. Now you say to people, take, uh, they take your vitamin C. Oh, yes, yes, I take my vitamin C. Well, there's probably some in the multi. Well, the multis are good, but maybe it's three or 400 units or, or maybe something. even if it's a couple thousand. Maybe yeah. a thousand. Yeah. But to, to, to catch up with what nature is doing in the other mammals, I take 6,000 in the morning, 6,000 at noon, and 6,000 at night. And Holy I, smokes. And it's never bothered me a bit. I think it's healthy. Oh, well, it's not going to hurt you. No, it's, it's very inexpensive, and hopefully it'll prevent, <laughs> me from, prevent me from getting cancer and colds yeah. and all. I don't know what all. Well, there you go. So little, I got little tips right. like that in right. my book. <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, this is your... These are your opinions. You're not a medical doctor, but it's, well, it is an opinion. I've read the research. I read the research about it, and you know, there's research on vitamin C, how it yeah. how it helps prevent these diseases too. So, they aren't my my research. It's mm-hmm. just I've been privy to this research, and I'm recounting it for the well, other people. Go. Well, make sure you let everybody know where you found those facts. <laughs> people are funny. They like to know sources and things when they read. Well, people it's been so many years ago. I. It's Do you long. have an example of like how you came up with the how you calculated? Lost it? in the shuffle is like Chinese drywall. <laughs> Chinese drywall. Yeah, somebody. Oh, that was a... Yeah, somebody called and say, "What what drywaller did you use? We got found <laughs> Chinese drywall in oh, one of your something? in one of your buildings." And that took out sakes, a lot of people. It was 30, 40 years ago. I I didn't even know who the drywaller contractor was, and chances are he wouldn't have known whether it was Chinese drywall right. or not. That's ripping something. out, ripping out walls, mold in there. And oh yeah, they were condemning buildings, condemning buildings. Oh boy, that was something. <laughs> well, that was great, Roy. I'm so happy to hear that. There's a lot of people here. There, I know you're going to be getting some checks in the mail. Well, that would be nice. I'll, I'll keep them uh, get this off separate, you know, and make sure they all get their book. There you go. Bo- books to begin this- with the first. What did I say? Twenty or. We'll get the extra yeah. book. And feel free to give Roy a call if you want. What's oh, your, yeah. Two, what's three, your phone nine, number? 239-514-4066. Two, three, nine, five, four, four, oh, six, six. Say it again. 239-514-4066. There you go. I'd love to chat, chat with anybody. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. He's got an answering machine there, so leave a message if you don't get a hold of him. Yeah, I like to talk to human beings on the phone. Everybody these days seem to be into the computer, and they're all yep. corresponding with a computer, which is certainly extremely efficient. It's quite a gadget. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, it's quite a gadget, <laughs> but uh, I enjoy talking on the phone. It's uh, certainly more of a personal contact with people. It's the old-fashioned way of communicating. Yeah, yeah right. I guess I'm Next old-fashioned. Next to face-to-face. <laughs> yep. Remember the old days of the telephone? You lift it up and the, the operator say, Num- operator. number, please. <laughs> I don't remember those days. You don't remember the number, please? Not, and was... We never called long distance because that cost oh, money. Oh, yeah, that was terrible. Oh, you'd have to call, ask for the long when distance When you made a long operator. distance call, the whole family gathered around oh, the phone. and talk real fast <laughs> and <Yeah>. click. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you had codes. Like if you were traveling, you'd call and let the phone ring twice and hang up or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> yep. Party lines. You remember? Did you have? Did you have party lines? Up party morning? lines. Where you where shared the phone listen line. In. Yeah. You'd, you'd hear the phone you'd up. You'd hear a little else. click, and then you know somebody yeah. was listening or, in. Yeah, you'd hear somebody talking. Sometimes if you pick your phone up. Party lines. It would cost you less money. <laughs> yep. Sometimes more than one party too. Oh yeah, that was something. <laughs> it's amazing how technology has changed. Yeah, that's another interesting thing. Is is uh, all the machinery that we live by. Yeah. You know, it's, our whole life is just uh, involved with all this machinery, our automobile, our telephone, electricity. Oh, yeah. I mean, good Lord, I remember when the juice was off, everything pretty well shut down. Oh, yeah. Down. <laughs> it taught us really quick the importance of electricity so we're, we're running lucky. water. We got all this uh, equipment and machinery that makes our life so yeah. enjoyable and, you know, and healthy. It's telephones. I, I have so many friends. Me. I don't have a regular phone in my house anymore. Oh, really? We just have our cell phones. Oh, I'm not much in a cell phone. I know, but that's, I mean, there's a lot of people now that don't have, you know, hard lines in their house. Yeah. They just use their cell phones. I mean, we have several, we have four different cell phone numbers. Well, I'm but, amazed about those little telephones where it's got a picture. I mean, it's really a mini computer. And, yeah. Well, and, that's what this is. And uh, I can't believe computers, when they first started out, the computer and it was an entire huge big building was it was one computer then they got a little smaller and i've got audrey's 
computer, my gosh, filled her whole office. There were right. huge, big, oh yeah, black boxes here, black boxes there, tremendous. Yeah. Now, now they're yeah, now the they're palm so of your small. Hands. They, oh my. Well, development. Well, is let's uh, see. There's a whole nother book you could write. All the changes you've seen over the years. <laughs> well, people have seen those. I, I mean, from, from horse and buggy to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, You've seen yeah. people go to the moon now and now outer the space. Ice, the Iceman, the, the ice came by with his horse. and The Milkman. My the grandma, ice she'd man. put a card in the window, 25 or 50, and he'd chisel it off with his ice pick off the big block and throw the ice tongs, and he'd put it over his shoulder. He had yeah. that big leather leather apron thing, and he'd walk up and he'd shove it in the, in the ice box. Coal? Did you get coal delivered? <laughs> Did they? Well, we didn't have a coal furnace. We had real oil. <laughs> Ice box. There's a lot. It's just, and we just take that a refrigerator for granted. I mean, now you don't think anything of, until the power goes out. Yeah, that's right. You didn't need power for the ice box. Nope, not in the old days. <laughs> oh <Boy>. my. <laughs> no. Nope. Well, life has been a glory, no question about it. You got what's, it. What's interesting to muse about while we're musing. Is, is what's in a hundred years from now, people look back and say, remember those dopes back in 20, <laughs> 2018 and they didn't know this or that? Exactly. And they did this, what a goofy thing to do, you know? <laughs> those two guys on <laughs> And the they beach. didn't have any wuchadil, whatever they're using for yep. equipment oh, that we yeah. don't have now. I mean, now technology just seems like it advances yeah, faster so and faster and faster. A hundred years, and that's another interesting thing is if I can live for another 25, years which would be nice or more uh, to see what new developments are going to come to pass because this whole atomic thing is developed during my lifetime right i told you about at michigan where the they had the cyclotron and, right. the, and the physics building yeah the only one that that and mit were the only two cyclotrons in the whole world i don't think the ruskies ruskies had one yet at that mm. time and they were cracking the atom. Right. That was back in 1942. Yeah. And they were making that A bomb yep. back in those years. That was a top secret, big top secret I think, project. Uh, I think the Ruskies, after the war, they grabbed a bunch of German scientists. Oh, that, that, what that the Manhattan? To, to build what their own, yeah. to build their own uh, uh, atom cracker. Mm. So that's been some very interesting development. So the yeah. big question: What's going to happen in the future? What's next? That's the million dollar question for sure. What's next? Well, and maybe the old space space buggy will land on the beach here and a gentleman will get out with his top hat and tails and say, how do you do? I'm from, uh, you know, in perfect right. English, Oxford English. Of course, or uh, whatever I'm, language. I'm from Mars. Yeah. You know from what, Mars. You know what happened? The, the officials would grab him and throw him in a quarantine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For not having his green green. Bar. Well, yeah, not a pass, no passport. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But that could be an interesting development in the future. Cause yeah. There's no question about with the universe this this unbelievably immense that there there must of be course, other there's got to be other life other out there somewhere and gosh to be in con wouldn't that be interesting what it looks like who knows but yeah yeah it's just like the sea just like we look out out here and there's still life forms that are undiscovered out in this water yeah, there's communicate with them you I, need a translator of course Oh, but, I think uh, they'd have, good, if they could get here, I think they'll be able to communicate. With a good translator, you'd be able to communicate with them. I think they'll be able to communicate. <laughs> if they can get here from another galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's interesting things to muse yep. about. And I, so it's, it's, it's nice to, to have uh, longevity so you can see these things develop. Well, great chat. Yeah. Great chat today. Yeah, one of the bigger chats. Yep, and that book, what's the title again? Let everybody know the title. Ah, well, it's uh, How I've uh, Lived Almost to 100. How I Lived. <laughs> he healthy and Happy. <laughs> healthy and Happy? Yeah. Lived how I Lived to Almost, almost 100. And it was the journey. Enjoying the journey. And enjoying the journey. That was how it. I Lived yeah. to Almost 100. Oh, the, almost, the, the almost I'm putting very small on the cover. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, in, in another six, seven years, I'll have to uh, scribble out that almost on that. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. How I live I'll, I'll write a sequel. To be 101. 
ongoing. 101 pounds of fun. <laughs> That's my little honey bun. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, All right. Anyway, life is a lot of fun. It is. Well, Roy. One of the joys of life, Rob, is seeing you down at the beast and chatting with you. <laughs> You're full of good cheer. And, I hope so. Yeah, good thoughts. I have people that say I'm not. Call me the old grump. <laughs> oh, I haven't, heard, I haven't seen your grumpy one moment. Uh, I try to keep <laughs> that's, that. That's another part at of home. Big part of life is always to be be joyful and happy and, yep. and thankful and appreciative. That makes you actually makes you feel better. Yeah, <laughs> you're right about that. Of course, down here we're sucking in the serotonin. I yeah. wonder how that mixes in with the uh, dead fish smell. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're laughing, so it must be working. It yeah. must be out there. We're happy whether That's the dead right. fish are here or not. The ser you need to put a chapter in about serotonin and beach walks. Well, you know what? That's I'm, I'm not a scientist, so the serotonin is kind of. But the, well, you have to. It's your opinion. I mean, well, it, my opinion is proven. my opinion. The 20 years that you've been coming out to this beach is added to your lifespan. But you know, another little scientific, and I think I mentioned that in my book too, is that when you pray, your brain creates serotonin. Brain. Now, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Scientists have proven that. Now that's an interesting thought too. So keep praying because it, 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 it makes a uh, happy gas develop <laughs> and you, you feel a lot better. Yes, the <laughs> euphoria. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's another. So my book has got a hundred and one little thoughts like is that, that, in that, there? Is that, that tip commonly in there? Is that in there about prayer and the Yeah, I, I got a whole chapter on prayer. And about, did you put in about the serotonin? Well, I'll have to check it out and make sure. Got to add that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I've got another part of the book about uh, not always talking about getting old. You know, you, it's, it's, you have a tendency to say, oh, I'm too old for that. Oh, or, oh, well, I used to do that, but I can't do that now. I'm getting too old. You know, you, you can't do that. That's a form of negative thinking. Right. Even though the facts are you're getting old, you don't dote on we that. Got, everybody's you just, getting old. You just think how lucky you are <laughs> to be here and how young and, and, and uh, vital you feel and all those things. There you go. So that's, uh, that, well, that ties in with negative thinking. Yeah, and dwell right. on the positive. Yeah. Not the negative. Absolutely. So it all ties into emotions, as we discussed here, some like. We keep on talking, they won't have to buy the book. I know, we're going to give the whole thing away <laughs> here for free. Well, it's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> well, it's something they could maybe give to their kids, too, or, you know, to a friend. And Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Something like that. <laughs> nope, there's going to be some good tips in there. And we've talked about many and many, many of them. Over the, well, you're over the, the, years you're the here one the who beach. stimulated me because right. you're always uh, kind of conning me into some thought for the day, and so I, I always had to dredge around and try to come up well, with first, something. First, we'll, we'll do the book. First, the book's going to come out, then we'll do the movie after that. <laughs> <laughs> movie. That's yeah. when you're in Hollywood. Well, no, we're going to do that right Rob here at the Stan's beach. Stan's production. I can just see the big, <laughs> big placard the there. The story of Roy. Yeah, what kind of movies are you going to specialize in? Uh, Documentaries. Be, oh, documentaries? Absolutely. I think that'd be interesting. Documentaries. I like working on documentaries. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. I've worked on some documentaries it. over the years. Yeah, I, seriously, I, you know, I kid you about it, but seriously, I think you'd be good at it and you might want to end up out there. No, I'm happy right here. Well, I w I'd hate to miss you, but... I don't uh, need to be out there to do that. It could be an opportunity. Maybe you can make your documentary right here. Exactly. Yeah. The story of Roy. I'm yeah. telling you. You don't need a Lewis B. Mayer or whatever production. <laughs> I Rob don't. Rob Stan's production. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Roy, you lift everybody's spirits. I can tell you that for oh, sure. I don't know about that. You're the, you're the lifter. You get, oh. you get things every started. That was a great chat. Yeah, we did have a great yeah. chat. I can't wait to... Keep me up. Keep us updated on how many orders you get. Well, would that be throwing? Give me a jingle when the first check comes in the mail. I know it's going to be probably within a couple well, days it'll today, be showing today up. Today is Sunday. There's no mail delivery today. Nope. I'll bet you by Wednesday you start seeing some action. You think so? I think so. Well, I'd like to get the book printed up. I really would. Everybody wants to see that happen. Yeah. So that'll, that'll be a thrill. So I'm going to post that later. And it'll stimulate me to 
to keep really working on the book real real energetically so I get it completed. There you go. Well, I'm going to post it, it your takes, contact information. It takes information. a lot of time to kind of put everything down, you know. Of course it does. It doesn't happen it, overnight. Don't, you know, there's don't rush it. And then while you're doing it, you always come up with other thoughts. That's what happens. Things kind of keeps expanding. But see, that's why I'm thinking there's another book down the road. A sequel. Yep. Well, that's a thought. You know, too. or else you you probably be right. You could spend the rest of your life writing the book. Well, and a lot you of people to. could maybe call me and say, "Hey, Roy, uh, what about uh, this and that?" Thoughts, I remember that thoughts story. Thoughts that they have. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, there's mean, a lot of stories we share. I mean, it could stimulate people to have their own thoughts about these things. There you I'm go. Sure, they, everybody has had unique experiences which have added to their their education and they'd like to share. There you go. So that, that could work too. Well, that's where we could we could set the Facebook page up and people could share their their thoughts on there. Yeah. Yep, they could just write their comments and we'll Good. start a well, page for the book. Well, let you worry about that. I'm not oriented towards the <laughs> computer thing. I'm going to need somebody to help me manage that one. <laughs> that's going to be a a lot of work there running that page. Uh -huh. We'll have to find somebody to help me. Because people like to sneak in bad things every once in a while. There's always I guess I bad don't, people. Don't understand. Just like that. the people who try to swindle money out of you over the telephone. You know, there's bad people everywhere. We just got to keep an eye on that. Oh, yeah, they, they promise you a, a $100,000 grant. Yep. And all you got to do is send them a, a $300 to. to verify your identity and you'll get the half a million dollar grant. So, if it sounds too good to be true. <laughs> it, is too, it is too good to be true. Yep, you know it's not. <laughs> All right, I got to get moving here. Okay, Rob, this Roy, been, it's been glorious. All right, are you going to head back down to sure your am. spot there? All right. Yeah. All right, always good seeing you, always good talking with you, and we'll talk more about the book. Yeah, yeah, this is exciting. It's to see gonna be. A, it's going to be a a top seller in no time. Well, I hope so. That would be something. Like <laughs> yep. All right, Roy. God bless. Bless you, Rob. Tally ho. Tally ho. Have a great day. You too. Bless you. <laughs> awesome. Our good friend, Roy. Watch your step. 93 years old. <laughs> All right, Daddy O. Oh, the sun came up. It did. It's beautiful now. Yeah, yeah. If I could go for a plunge, I would. Well. <laughs> uh, the germs are working. Yep. All right. I'll see you later. Okay. Great seeing you, Rob. Yep. Have a good day. You too. Be careful. Watch those dead fish. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. He is he is writing his book. His book is coming out here in probably a month. He's looking for those pre-orders here to get a little seed money. Roy doesn't have a lot of money. Get a little seed money to get the first 50 at least published, printed and published. So I'll post his address. He doesn't care. He said post his address and phone number and 20 bucks and... The first 50 copies definitely are going to get in. A, you're going to be there. Be autographed with a little autographed with a little message from Roy. The first 20 orders, you're going to get a copy of his other book, Happiness. He said he thinks he has 20 copies of that book left. I hope he's right. <laughs> I'm going to give you one more look here around the beach, Out into the Gulf. Pretty good sized little waves here breaking along the shore. Still feeling the effects of red tide here in North Naples. A lot of dead fish on the beach. If you want to learn, if you don't know what red tide is, you want to learn more about red tide, I posted a link a little earlier this morning. Some of the facts about red tide. Be sure to check that out. Hey, we did see two dolphins this morning offshore, just briefly. Well, that was great. I was so worried that the dolphins had 
gone away because of the red tide, but they were out here. We saw them chasing some fish around earlier. So that was a great sight. It's been a long morning, a long live feed. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's a great bunch of people that we've got watching. I love how everybody comments and chats back and forth with each other in the comments. That's what this is all about, this live feed. It's about bringing people together while enjoying... <laughs> Whoa. <coughs> the red... <coughs> Pardon me. The red tide is really bad right here. Really bad. Woo! Oh, that's terrible. That stinks. Between the red tide and the dead fish. He you. <coughs> oh boy. Oh. Boy, that was terrible. I almost threw up just now. <laughs> Man. Yeah, be careful going up the hill here. Oh man, that was a nasty, nasty. No, get behind the trees. All right, Roy, I'll see you later. Stay safe. That was a great chat. It was. Can't wait to see your mailbox next week. Yeah, won't that be exciting? Yep. <laughs> Keep working on the book. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna. Before we sign off here, I'm gonna get a picture of you down by Audrey's bench. I'll meet you down there, okay? okay. I'll be right down. All right. Quick, quick. I'm gonna take the beach route, see if I can breathe, if I don't suffocate here. Oh, boy, right up at. Whew. Just behind me, the red tide was really, really strong. But I was saying how great it is to have all of you wonderful people here watching, sharing this feed, and how I really enjoy all those comments everybody is making. I mean, it's becoming overwhelming to respond to all the comments. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of comments, but I love them. And I like the way everybody, you know, they have their little conversations going here in the, com com in the comment section, back and forth. Be sure to let everybody know where you're from. That's very important. Let everybody know where you're watching from. We've got people from all around the world watching now. This is our little online beach community. Most of my beach walks take place under more pleasant conditions, but sadly, we have just been feeling the wrath of a red tide outbreak for nearly a month now. It comes and goes just over the past month. We'll show up and then we'll have two or three nice days and then the wind changes, comes in from the gulf again and 
The fish wash up on the beach and you can't even breathe out here. It's horrible. But the red tide is a natural occurrence. It starts out in the Gulf and then makes its way into shore. And that's when we have the problems. Just click on the link that I posted earlier and read about red tide, what causes it. And yes, man does play a part in red tide. Red tide's been around a long time, but our fertilizers, the nutrients in the fertilizers, they fuel the red tide when it comes in. They feed it as it gets closer to shore. So yes, pollution is a part of red tide. Well, I've got a low battery warning here, so I gotta sign off. I wanna thank everybody for watching. Again, I'm up in North Naples, Florida at Del Norwegian's Pass State Park. Have a great Sunday, wherever you might be watching from. For Southwest Florida Television, I'm Rob Stan. God bless.